Okay, hey everybody. Uh, welcome to Introduction to Data Science. Uh, we're starting off with the foundational series today. So today we've got a couple of learning objectives. Uh, we're going to be learning just about how to talk about data in general. Uh, we're going to be learning the difference between quantitative and qualitative data. And then finally, we're going to be learning how to describe data succinctly using summary statistics. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and start off. So we are starting off with one assumption. And what is this assumption? The assumption is that we have data. Um, you might be like, well, of course we're doing data science here. We should assume we have data, right? This isn't necessarily true. Um, <clears throat> for example, a lot of people that are in policy, uh, they'll go ahead and design experiments in order to get the data that they need in order to make the policy decisions that are important. So they don't start off with data, they instead start off with experiments. Um, if you're working at a web development company and you're going to do an A-B test, this is in a sense gathering data. Um, or if you're in a web development company and you want to gather data on your on your clients, you know one thing that you would need to do is you need to implement uh, the things that gather the data for you. And this would be on the front end and the back end. Uh, so in a lot of cases, you don't even have data if you're a data scientist. You start off with no data. Um, or you start off with the need for more data. Um, but this is kind of a, a field to itself. I, I enjoy it uh, quite a lot, but I'm not the biggest expert in it. So, And because it's such a diverse field, uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways to sort of go about it. I think we're going to start off with the assumption that we have data. After the course, we're going to do a little bit of a recap. Uh, we're going to learn why it's important to have data and what, what do we like about the data that we have and what's bad and what's good. And knowing all this will sort of give you a better understanding of why, why or, or what type of data to gather. Okay, so that's our first assumption. Um, as always in this course, I'm going to be writing out our assumptions in kind of a little graph. Uh, so down here, I've got our first assumption. That is a data assumption. Okay, and it's basically we have a data set. And we can call this data set the inputs. There's multiple points in our data set. So x1, x2, to up, up to xn. So we've got n points in our data set. But this is our first assumption. The assumptions will eventually connect. There'll be more of them than just sort of one bubble. But for now, we've got one. Okay, so in order to talk about the data a little bit more efficiently, let's get some data. So I've gone ahead and I've made some data here. I've got quantitative one, quantitative two, and then qualitative data. And they're just random. I've got six data points, as you can see. So six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three columns. Um, the only really thing to, to note here is that kind of data has these two main dimensions, their rows and their columns, and people call these things by different names. So for example, columns can sometimes go by dimensions or features or covariates or M and rows can go by other names too, like samples, data points in. Um, I'm gonna generally try to stick to calling them features uh, as well as data points. Uh, that being said, you know, there will be times when I mess up. So, you know, feel free to refer back to this uh, or even sort of to the summary statistics uh, lesson in order to go ahead and check out what these names for these things are. So. Okay, we know how to very basically describe data. Data has samples uh, and it has features. Uh, each sample is an individual, it's a unit of, of something that you're interested in, and each feature is, is some characteristic about that unit. Could be houses, could be sharks, could be people. So, what are the features? So the features can come in two flavors. They can come in a quantitative flavor and they can come in a qualitative flavor. The quantitative flavor can be easily described with a number. The qualitative flavor cannot be easily described as a number. If you are unsure of whether your feature should be quantitative or qualitative, a good question to ask yourself is, can this be averaged? Uh, so for example, if you were, I don't know, gathering statistics on whether people are happy or not, you, you might immediately assume, oh, happiness, this is this is probably got to be uh, qualitative, right? Because it's very hard to describe happiness with a number. But you can imagine averaging, such so say, uh, depressed with content to get something like melancholy. So maybe you could have a happiness index. So rate your happiness from zero to ten. Um, some things are harder. So for example, you know, average confused and giddy. You and I don't really know what to do here. Or average Chinese and English. You know. Mm. So in these cases, you know, you're definitely going to need to use the qualitative data. So quantitative and qualitative data, these are the two types. And there are two different types of summary statistics that we can use to describe each. Uh, so for example, with describing qualitative features, there's not too many summary statistics that we can use. Why? Well, summary statistics are a number. 
qualitative features can't easily be described with numbers. So you've, you've got sort of this like head-on collision between these two forces. Um, the summary statistics that I know of sort of off the top of my head, you can go ahead and you can count them, right? So you've got two blues, three reds, one yellow. This can give you the mode or the most common type in your summary or in the most common type in your data. And you can also find the median, for example, if these things were ordered. So um, an example could be you, you watch the race and you see things that are that are going fast, faster, and fastest. Or you've got different types of boxes. You have some that are small, uh, larger, medium, you know, shirt sizes or something like that. Okay, so that's basically how you can describe qualitative features. Not too much. Quantitative features, on the other hand, you can describe quite thoroughly. Um, I think there's like four ways, so just four ways that you can describe quantitative features. You've got center statistics. Uh, center statistics are basically um, it describes where most of the data lives. Uh, you've got spread, which describes sort of how spread out the data is, how far away from the center your data is. Dependence, this talks about two features and how they relate. So for example, age uh, and income. Uh, and then shape, and then this is sort of the shape of your data. Um, and we'll be going over this next time. So let's check out center and spread statistics. Um, so the center and spread statistics that we generally are interested in are quantitative one mean, so the average, the standard deviation, the median. Uh, we can easily get these using a dot describe. Okay. So in the describe, we get the count, the mean, the standard deviation, the min, the 25th percentile, the 50th, which is called the median, uh, the 75th percentile, and the max. Now, at this point, you might be asking yourself, okay, this is all wonderful, but why do I care? Right? Um, and, you know, I'm going to try to really make it quite clear as to why you should care. Uh, but it's going to seem a little bit abstract this lesson. Uh, the reason why you should care is because summary statistics are going to provide us the tools that we need to answer questions about the data. That's, that's basically it. Um, you will see very quickly in the practical section, we will use summary statistics in order to find really cool things out about data. Uh, so, yeah, that's awesome. You will see in the, not the, the practical section, but in the foundational section, this one that we're doing right here, that we're going to repeatedly use summary statistics in order to prove more and more complex things to ourselves. So later on, we're going to be comparing something called bootstrap to a summary statistic. Later on, we're even going to be comparing uh, machine learning, like linear regression, to a summary statistic of the data itself. So summary statistics are very, very useful, right? Um, you just might not see it right now. Uh, so the reason why summary statistics are useful is they answer real questions about the data. Okay. So we've gone over how to get some basic sort of summary statistics, the center and the spread statistics. The way to get uh, dependent statistics, the one that most people use is something called the correlation. So this is a linear correlation. Um, and so in this case, you certainly call df.core and this will get the correlation between all the quantitative features. Um, to read this, it's pretty simple. Uh, you basically look at whatever feature you're interested in. So for example, I might be interested in quantitative one, and I might be interested in its correlation with another feature, so quantitative two. So I look at quantitative one, and then I scroll over to quantitative two, and I see that the correlation is 0.96. Um, correlation, we can. I can go ahead and give you the formula. I don't think it helps too much. We're not going to be using it too much in this class. That being said, to give you just a little bit of intuition, um, if the correlation is one when quantitative one is big, quantitative two is also big. If it's negative one, if quantitative one is small, then quantitative two is big. And then of course, if it's just willy nilly, then uh, the correlation is gonna be zero. Okay, so that, that was basically it. Uh, the lesson is very simple, it's very basic. It gives us the lingo that we sort of need. We now understand what a summary statistic is. We understand what summary statistics we can take from quantitative and qualitative data. It gives us really sort of the first step in, in our long journey, a uh, very long journey. This is probably gonna be a 40 episode series. So, so wrapping up, um, we now know a lot of stuff. Uh, again, I just wanna ask the question, who cares? We care because we can ask practical questions about our data, and the way that we ask practical questions about our data is using summary statistics. And another name for summary statistic is a function of your data, right? A function of your data that hopefully returns something smaller than the data itself, right? Um, it's like a moving average is like a function of your data, but you know, it's gonna return a lot of points. So you're probably gonna have to visualize those anyway. Um, now, there's one thing that I wanna note, and so, so as not to tempt you. Um, 
This lesson, we talked about summary statistics of the data itself. So let's say you've got, so for example, you collect a data set of people's heights, you measure it all, it's six feet tall, and you wanna say, hey, therefore the people in America are probably around six feet tall in, in, in height. Um, can you do that? No, definitely not. You cannot say anything in general. So big capital letters here. And the reason why is because we only have one assumption. We have one assumption that we have data. We don't know where this data is from. You know, this data could be made up, right? Well, I mean, hopefully it's not made up. Let's assume it's not made up. But this, this data could be from a basketball team. It could also be from sort of a, a group of people like, uh, you know, a tour group of people from Spain, right? They, you know, these aren't Americans. You know, you're, you're measuring the wrong thing. Um, so with the assumption that we have here, we cannot say anything about the data. Okay, or we cannot say anything in general. We can say things about the data specifically. We can't say anything about the population that the data might come from. Okay, so we've gone through our learning objectives. So we've learned a basic lingo. We've described summary statistics. We've described quantitative and qualitative. I think we are ready to go. Uh, the final thing is comprehension questions. Um, I'll go ahead and move myself up. So these are the comprehension questions for today's lesson. You can also check them out on the GitHub page that's associated with this. So check out the link below. And what I would suggest you do is go ahead and answer these. And if you think your answer is great, go ahead and comment it down below. Um, if you see someone has already commented some answer that's pretty similar to yours, probably no need to. Uh, but then I'll go ahead and check the answers down there. Um, if you can answer all of these questions and you get them all correct, then I think you understood the lesson as, as really as best you could. Okay, thanks and tune in next time.